Okay, so I'll, I'll just uh, repeat that. So, with it, with addiction, in early stage addiction, I was an addict. Uh, early stage addiction, uh, you often feel bad. You might feel lonely, depressed, angry, fearful, disconnected, self-loathing. Those are all common feelings for, for addicts. They feel, you know, they might feel self-hatred, self-loathing, not good enough, a uh, sense of fear, wanting some kind of recognition or love from others. These are all hallmarks of people who are in addiction. I'm not saying always, but I had all of those things. Uh, and uh, so my ego would come up with, if I could get this thing, then I'd be happy, you know. And uh, I go to 12-step groups which are related to addiction, and you have 12-step groups for people with food addiction. That's my primary addiction is food like sugary donuts, chocolates, sweets, cakes. As an early child, I would feel bad, but I would feel happy after eating sweets, you know. And, uh, and so that would be my, uh, that would be my, my go-to addiction for trying to get a sense of relief from this feeling of not feeling good enough and bad all the time. Now, uh, and there can be alcoholics, there can be drug addicts, there can be love addicts, you know, the relationships. Uh, so, so the thing is, when you're at a low state and you become addicted to something, in the early stages of addiction, it's all, it's all pretty similar, when you do the activity, you feel really good for a long period of time. So, you know, you, you're feeling a bit bad, you, and then you go and you binge out on a lot of sweets, and then you feel good for a while. Now, this could be the same thing for alcoholics in early stage alcoholism. You know, they might be feeling like disconnected and lonely, like they can't speak to people, they feel a lot of social anxiety, and then they have a few, uh, few drinks, and then suddenly they feel like connected to everyone, they feel like they can be happy, they can be lively, they want to talk to people, they want to make friends, they feel everyone's friendly and, and they have a good view of the world. So this happens in the early stage alcoholism, that can last for quite a long time and you want to drink regularly. Go to the pub, drink regularly, speak to friends, be confident, speak to women for the first time, feel confident, you won't get rejected, make friends, make girlfriends. So that happens for a long time. Uh, in, lo in love addiction, you might, be, you might get your first girlfriend or boyfriend and then you feel really happy and connected. And so the ego then associates, you become addicted to doing that thing over and over again to get this wonderful feeling because it felt so much better than your normal state of consciousness. So you just keep doing it. And early stages of addiction can last for a long period of time. Like you can be drinking for some years or eating sugary stuff. Or, you know, I meet people who are relationship addicts. It's like, as soon as you're, they're masters, I'm quite impressed. As soon as a relationship mm. ends, within mm. like a day or so, I'm quite impressed. Like, <laughs> wow, that's pretty clever. It's like, <laughs> it's like you can get a, a new relationship that fast. Oh. <laughs> it's like, they're, 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 yeah. they are, no, I've seen them. They it's are like masters, they, yeah, they, they, I've seen too. them, I've heard yeah. them, I go, like I'm, I'm, I'm virtually never without a relationship. Because I need it so much. Yeah. It's like, and they'll say together. things like, I've virtually never ever been without a relationship. Yeah. And I'm like, yeah. gosh, that's, that, that's got to be, but actually I do know that addicts are very resourceful. Mm. You know, like if I want to get a drink, or mm. if I wanted to get a chocolate, or if I wanted to like, you know, like if I... If I was in my sugar addiction, like if I was in, in a, just a bit, I'm just right. if I if I wanted to uh, get some sugar, I'd like steal it, mm. or I'd wait till people are leaving the room and then raid the cupboards for biscuits or something like that. So I know that you become extremely because it's like your life depends on it. Mm. It's like you're so addicted that you're so creative, you become a master oh. at making sure you have an endless supply of your drug. So I probably, I wasn't a relationship addict, but I probably would have been masters at dating web. I'd probably have 300 apps on dating mm -hmm. and be probably in a, in a relationship and be messaging 300 girls at the same time. Mm -hmm. So that as soon as one ends, I, I don't do this though. <laughs> I'm, I'm not, no, I have actually been in many relationships, but just in case people get the wrong. But I probably I did that. I did, I did that with sugar. Okay, I did that with sugar. But anyway, so but okay. Now the point I wanted to make with this video is that after a few, after a few, after a few years, you do the same thing that you used to do in the early days, and you don't feel good from it. 
And that's what we call classically end-stage addiction. Because I've been doing eating the sugar and donuts for a long time, but it, suddenly there comes a point you eat the sugar and donuts and you don't get any relief. Mm. You know, and, and you know, probably if you're a love addict, you know, you go, you end a relationship and you grab another relationship and you still feel bad. Mm. It usually it, it used to fix you before, mm. but it's no longer fixing you. And Romana talked about this, um, uh, I think very eloquently, Mujit said it to me, it's like, when you want something, it's like, an, it's like a thought that goes in the background, like I want a donut, I want a donut, or I want a girlfriend, whatever it is. And then as soon, because you want it, you're actually in a state of distress, you know, the, even though you think, you, you think you're happy, but you're not, you're just in a state of wanting something to be happy. Mm. So you're actually not happy if you want a Ferrari, you want mm. a girlfriend, you're in a state, and it's because you're building up all this disconnection from, the, from, the, from God, from the self, from the sunlight and the spirit, as soon as you get it, your ego stays silent and you get a connection to God and, and, then, you, and then you get a high because you got the donut, you got the girl, uh, you got the boy, or you got the Ferrari, you get that high, and that high isn't actually coming from the Ferrari, or the girl, or the boy, or the donut. That high is coming because you wanted it, and now your ego says so. And then after a while, it starts to talk and says, you need, another, you need that again, or you need a slightly different version, to get something better. So that becomes addiction, which is based on the idea that that thing gives you happiness. And the end stage, because it's not based sustainably on truth in the long term, you keep doing it, and then suddenly the donuts stop working, suddenly the alcohol stops working, suddenly the new girl or boy stops working. So even though you got it, you're still feeling disconnected. Sorry, I cut you off. No, it's okay. Um, yeah, end stage addiction. Yes. So in an end stage End stage that? addiction, yeah. Addiction. It stops working. The That's something working. I can relate to because in the few short relationships I've had, I didn't feel that good, even though when I was kind of fantasizing about it, I was feeling really good. Yes. And like even when I drink alcohol, it doesn't make me feel joyful. It relaxes me a bit, but it doesn't really have an effect on me. And so, pretty much every most things in my life, I'm in end stage. Um, but I suppose when it comes to fantasizing about relationships and sex, that makes me feel good. But I know when I actually do it, I don't feel good. Uh, I think the, the real positive is it keeps me on the spiritual path. Yes. You just say if I were to get a relationship and it would make me feel good for a year, to me that's just a wasted year because it's just spending time in, a, in an illusion. So, I think I've end stage addiction in, in a lot of things, and it keeps me on the on the spiritual path, which is a good thing. Um, but the spiritual path is quite difficult. <laughs> yeah, it is very so, difficult. I yeah. just want to check. We're okay for this to be on camera. Yeah, that's fine. Okay, that's yeah. Cool. I just want to check. Yeah. Yep. So absolutely, end stage, and end stage usually takes people into some kind of spiritual, um, some kind of spirit, some kind of spiritual quest opens up if mm. you haven't already been, and usually end up going to a twelve step group or, you know, doing some kind of advance, you might be led to a spiritual teacher, like um, in my case, Dr. Hawkins or Enlightenment. Because, of course, the outside thing can't be the fix, ultimately. In 12-step groups, for me, 12-step groups um, aren't at the level of Enlightenment, but uh, they do create, they do give, they do help you to surrender the thing, so you get a sense of self-connection to God. And so, I would say like a, like a, the difference between, um, but there is actually, there's a line in 12-step literature, actually, which for me is getting towards the level of enlightenment. Uh, there's a line in the big book, which is the 12-step literature, it says, like, when, uh, when I'm in fit spiritual condition, I'll be placed in the position of neutrality around alcohol. And for me, the calibration of that statement would be uh, a lot higher than a lot of the stuff in 12-step groups. Because Sorry, what's your statement? yeah, so it, it says in, there's there's a there's a book in, uh, called the Big Book that I often use in trust. It says when I'm in fit spiritual condition, so around the promises, and then I I will be in a position of neutrality okay. around alcohol. Yeah. Right. Neutrality is two fifty. Yeah. Neutrality is two fifty, yeah. right? Yeah. Um, well, yeah, it, well, neutrality is two fifty. But for me, it's like neutrality is not it's not it's not it's not two fifty. 
but because I'm, but not having an opinion could be six hundred if you have no positionality about it. Well, yeah. you, when you when you see, it's a bit more than two fifty mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. you see it's like when an alcoholic is um, is in a position of neutrality, they don't notice it any longer. Mm -hmm. You see, so it's not like I could take it or leave it. It's yeah. Like it, so I can see how it would be six hundred because yes. if you don't have an opinion or positionality, yes. then you're in a, like a non-dual. Yes. So yeah, I can see how it would calibrate six hundred. So. Well, yeah. For, for me, it's like there's no charge on it. There's mm. there's no mm. charge on it. Yeah. You know, for an addict, yeah, yeah. for for like an alcoholic to have zero charge is more than two hundred. Uh, on it uh, uh, than than simple uh, take a leave. It's like total freedom, total mm -hmm. freedom from something that you were using to the gates of death. So um, and uh, that has been uh, like I say with my, my my food addiction. Now like I say like I haven't had any body obsession for eight years straight. In the <coughs> last eight years, only one day of food obsession in eight years. So this is what I call a position of neutrality. I don't think about it. It's not a thing that, that enters my mind. Even if I walk past a donut shop, you know, I just walk past it without noticing I've walked past mm. it. So that kind of thing is like when you totally take it out of your, you, you, you basically, like well, for me, like when you do enough spiritual work, you've like taken the meaning and the association and the emotional charge if you keep going to the observer. So you just walk by, there's, it's, it's a neutral, almost unregistered phenomenon. And, and actually, uh, that's quite common in a lot of 12-step groups when there's a really strong spiritual connection. So that's, that, I mean, that for me is like complete freedom, which is, which is, which is an awesome thing. So, but the 12-step groups are helping you to um, reconnect to source. Um, and when it's done properly, but, you know, if I, one of the things that I often say to people in 12-step groups, because I want to take my own spin on it, is like, Mm. It's like if my ego still wants payoff from it, you know, if there's a sense of neediness or desire or craving around the thing, to the extent that I have that, then um, it will affect my level of consciousness in relationship to that, you know. So I'm not, I'm not saying there's nothing wrong with, with, <coughs> with those things, but they're just different levels. Because remember, like, I want to be in a position of neutrality, meaning I want to be in the state of the enlightened teachers, meaning that I want not to need or want it. But this, here I want to say something really, really important, uh, just to qualify, because a lot of people misunderstand me when I say that. You know, like, when you're in... A lot of people have been in states of peace and, or flow or bliss for a whole day. Yeah? I think a lot of spiritual seekers have had that. And when you're in a state of peace or serenity or flow for a whole day or period of time, it's like everything happens, but there's no craving. Uh, have, when, you're in a, when you're in a state of grace throughout the whole day, there's no state of neediness or craving throughout the whole day, and yet the whole day is enjoyable. Are, are you with me? So um, you notice it, like when, when you do spiritual work and you have a day when you've just been really, really peaceful and happy the whole day, uh, I've had them regularly, it's like the, the, states of, um, the states of going down don't, don't happen. And actually you're present throughout the whole day. It's only like, um, so I say, that, anyway, I'll, I'll say it with, because uh, I often, I'm in the food addiction programs. And people, people often say to me, like, how can you not feel hungry throughout the day? Like, would you not forget to eat? Um, and I sort of say, it's like, when you're in a high state of consciousness, and you've done a lot of transcendence work around food, like, um, you eat, but you don't get the hunger to eat. You know, it's like, before you eat, it's like, eating is like brushing your teeth. Uh, right, so like, like, do I need to have a craving to brush my teeth, or would I forget? Like, I can wake up in the morning and feel happy, and then it's time to brush my teeth, and I can feel happy, and I finish brushing my teeth, and I can feel happy, and it's like, it's not like I needed the craving for a tooth for toothpaste to remember to brush, you know. 
actually, and I, because I, I have to like talk to food addicts because they always say, no, you have to feel hungry to eat. And I say, you don't have to feel hungry to eat. You can not, you can eat and not be hungry. You know, and I, I always say, I always say to these, because they, it's like breaking beliefs with people. Like people say to me, like I always say to them, like, um, like today, did you feel, because it's different, for, I mean, a lot of people watching this video are not food addicts, so they don't know what I'm talking about. But like, it's like a drivenness, like you, you have to eat or you feel like you'll die. And I'll say to the food addicts, like, today, um, did, you, did you feel thirsty today? And nearly all of them will say, like, I didn't feel thirsty today. But they drank throughout the day. But they, didn't, they weren't run by, like, oh, my God, you know, I need a drink, I'm going to die. You know, for food addicts, it's like that. But for normal people, actually, you go through your life, you're not thirsty, you know. In the sense of you hardly experience it. You don't experience it as a suffering throughout the day. It's like... Uh, do you remember like suffering from thirst yesterday and having to go grab a glass of water? You don't remember. It doesn't. It's not trackable within the ego. It's like a non-event. It, it didn't happen. When you transcend your food addiction, it's like a non-event. It's not registered as a thing of like being hungry and needing to eat. Like uh, being thirsty and needing to drink is not registered for most people. Maybe I probably get lots of people saying that they, they do, but they probably don't understand what I'm saying. So it's like when you when you fill out the repressed feelings and you you cancel your belief or let go of the meaning of food, then it becomes something similar to the other events which are not really registered in consciousness. Uh, I think I probably might not have been clear on this video, and people may not have fully understood me. I might get some YouTube comments on this video, but. Uh, <laughs> But I'll try, and if you do, if you don't, if you if you're finding difficult what I'm saying, just leave a YouTube comment. I'll try and uh, get back and try and explain what I've said.